Lobbyan says all prayers to Shri Prabhupada and Shri Guru and Gauranga and all assembled devotees Yashamati from Chicago. Hare Krishna Yashamati Mataji, Dharmat Pranam. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Lakshmi Mataji. All glories to Shri Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. My humble obeisance is to you and all the devotees. This is Krishna Kumari. Hare Krishna Krishna Kumari Mataji, Dharmat Pranam. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Lakshmi Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisance. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to the assembled devotees. This is Anita from Sharjah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Anita Mataji, Dharmat Pranam. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Lakshmi Mataji, Dhanavad Param, Shila Prabhupada, Kishay Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. This is Shyamagari Devi Dasi from Jalit. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Shyamagari Mataji, Dhanavad Pranam. All glory to Shila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Lakshmi Mataji, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all the assembled devotees. This is Indulekha Karna Devi Dasi from Lincoln. Hare Krishna Indulekha Mataji, Dhanvat Prina. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Do we have any more introductions before we start the class? Hello, Hare Krishna Lakshmi Mataji. Uh, accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Prabhupada, all glory to all Guru Maharajas, and all glory to all the devotees, excellent devotees in the Sangha. And I'm Sukhakar Krishnadas from Chennai, a chartered accountant. Thank you. Hare Krishna Sukhakar Prabhuji, Dhanvat Pranam, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining us today, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Krishna Prabhuji, Jai Ho. Am I audible to all of you? Yes, yes Prabhuji. Very nice. Thank you so much. Well, welcome to Bhakti Sangha Conference Call. <clears throat> we are extremely fortunate to have His Grace Vishwa Swarup Prabhuji here with us today. And Prabhuji would be enlightening us by discussing the glories of Srila Sanatan Goswami, Gopal Bhatti Goswami, and Loknath Goswami. But before we dive into this nectarine class, I would like to request Raj Prabhuji to share a brief introduction about his, his grace, Vishwas, Vishwasaru Prabhuji. Vishwaru. Vishwaru Prabhuji. Thank you, Mataji. Raj Prabhu, go ahead. Hare Krishna, Mataji. Dhanva Pranam to you and all the assembled devotees. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, Shri Guru and Gauranga. Hare Krishna, Prabhu, Dhanva Pranam to you. Welcome. Here is a brief introduction for Prabhuji. His Grace Vishwarupa Prabhuji was introduced to ISKCON in 1983 during his medical college days. Prabhuji received his first initiation in 1986 and Brahmin initiation in 1987. Prabhuji, was inter Prabhuji introduced many families to Krishna consciousness and cultivated many young student doctors as spiritual counselor. Prabhu joined Radha Gopinath Temple for full-time services in 1986. He organized the medical camps in Western Maharashtra suburbs, consisting of prasadam distribution, Harinam Sankirtan, cultivating volunteers in Krishna consciousness and free medical services to villagers. Later on, Prabhuji moved to Rishikesh and Vrindavan to serve in many capacities. Prabhuji developed the Barsana Eye Camp services in 1992. Prabhuji worked in Saudi Arabia from 95 to 97 as a medical doctor and conducted secret spiritual programs every Friday for an average 20 people. In 1997, Prabhu joined Bhaktivedanta Hospital as an officer on special duty. There, he also assisted in establishing the Department of Spiritual Care. In 2004, Prabhuji took full responsibility of the Department of Spiritual Care as Deputy Director. He also started spiritual counseling services to needy patients on outpatient basis. He developed a detailed protocol for end-of-life spiritual care and he trains the staff members on regularly on this subject. Prabhuji extensively delivered spiritual discourses on Bhagavad Gita on various television channels like Star TV, Asha, 
and Colors TV, etc. Prabhu has also delivered professional and spiritual discourses to medical professional in U- UK and USA. This is a very brief introduction for Prabhu ji and his unlimited services for ISKCON and uh, for Sheila Prabhupada's mission. I just have one thing to add. Uh, last time, Prabhu ji, when I see Prabhu ji on call about a year ago, uh, Prabhu ji told, spoke about on Radha Janavash to me, and the katha is still in my mind. That was such a beautiful katha. So, Prabhu ji, looking forward to hear more nectar from you. Hare Krishna. Over to you, Mata ji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, uh, Raj Prabhu ji. Hare Krishna, Vishwaru Prabhu ji, Dharmat Pranam, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you very much for your valuable time and association this morning and enlightening us on the topic of. Uh, the glories. But without further ado, I would like to request you to please take over from here. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. First of all, I express my gratitude for having me amongst you. Thank you very much. Oma Jnana Timiran Dasya Jnanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militham Yena Tasmai Sri Guruve Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stabitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakada Mayam Dadati Swa Padantikam Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Dadadhar Sri Vasadi Gauru Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So I have one question to the organizers, which Goswami I should start with first? Poster says Sanatana Goswami, Prabhuji. Okay, okay, okay. very good. Very good. If your poster has uh, Sanatana Goswami as first, in any way, he's a senior most. So let us start. My uh, most humble Prostrated pranams to His Divine Grace, Sanatan Goswami Maharaj, who is the Acharya for Sambandha Gyan, who is the worshipper of the deities of Radha Madan Mohanji. My only worry is that each Goswami that you have enlisted today is so glorious that uh, it can consume, one can consume the whole one hour. So I fear and I beg forgiveness from beginning only uh, so that I may do justice to all three <laughs> in given time. Anyway, so Sanatan Goswami and uh, Rupa Goswami were brothers. They were three brothers. Anupam was a grahastha and uh, Sanatan and uh, Rupa Goswamis, they took sannyas. They were renunciants. They were working with Nawab Hussain Shah as uh, Prime Minister and Finance Minister, Dabir Khas and Sakar Malik. And then at uh, one time, there's a long association with uh, Nawab Hussain Shah, who was the incarnation of Jarasandha in Krishna Leela. So they felt uh, we should now renounce everything and uh, dedicate our life to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So they took off in the name of sickness and finally they were arrested by Nawab Hussain Shah and then they, both of them escaped, escaped from the prison house by bribing the uh, jailers. And then Sanatana Goswami uh, met Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in Varanasi. <clears throat> in Varanasi, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Sanatan Goswami for two full months on the subject of Sambandha Gyan. That means, how does one connect with the Supreme Personality of Godhead? And that whole knowledge, intensive knowledge, we can say intensive crash course of two months, finally manifested in the Books like uh, uh, Hari Bhakti Vilas and uh, Lagur Bhagavata Amrita, Brahad Bhagavata Amrita, and so many other beautiful scriptures. So uh, after that, Sanatan Goswami came to Vrindavan. 
And you know, one thing we should note very significantly that they were filthy, filthy, filthy rich. They were they were drowning in the ocean of unlimited wealth. One cannot imagine today what wealth they had. We may be having Warren Buffet and you know Bill Gates and India Mukesh Ambani in mind. So they were like peanuts compared to the wealth of Sanatan Goswami and Rupa Goswami. So how much the wealth was, we cannot imagine. They had you know, huge boat loads, overflowing gold coins. And that they had renounced. That they had distributed. He distributed that all to brahmanas and needy people. And such royal facilities were there for to, them to live. The food material to eat, the staying facility. The, they developed something like uh, Govardhan Eco Village in their own home. It was their own private home. They had developed full Vrindavan. So one of the historical proofs and uh, you know evidence of developing Vrindavan out of Vrindavan is in Ramakili. And from that level, Chaktva Torunam Ashesha Mandalapati Shrenim Sadatu Chavad. Everything they dropped like a piece of garbage. And they wore kopin. He wore kopin. And nothing else. Begging once in a few days. Staying under one tree for not more than three days. And changing the uh, tree also. Not to get attached. So we can understand from Sanatan Goswami's example. That there must be logically much, much more pleasure in what they were doing wearing Kopin in Vrindavan than what they were doing in their own working places in Ramakili. And a much subtler and much higher spiritual joy was there. That is why when one gives up anything, when you get something higher, you give up something. So when one gives up wealth, so much of wealth where everybody is seeking the wealth for, whole life they are working hard and fighting for the wealth. And when someone gives up that wealth, that means they were they were having something or they were have achieved something higher than the so-called wealth of this world. And uh, lo and behold, today we all go to Vrindavan, so crowded, so many vehicles, roads, ashrams, you know, Parikrama path, newly paved. There are so many things. We, sometimes we don't feel like even going to Vrindavan because so much crowded. And whenever we think of Vrindavan, you and me, we think, oh, that Sunday rush, that barricading and that tempos and horns and so many of the crowds. But the time when Sanatan Goswami went to Vrindavan, it was all a jungle of forest. And believe me, there were no grahasthas living in Vrindavan in those days. It was only mendicants would dare to stay because Tigers, lions, wild elephants, all over inhabiting that place. Only those who have renounced everything, including the desire to live, if at all, they would dare to stay in the forest. And uh, another thing we must know that when they, if they wanted to beg for the sustenance, they would have to go to Mathura to beg. Sanatan Goswami would go to Mathura. Sometimes once in a week, sometimes after many days to beg. Madhukri. <laughs> so in Vrindavan today, you go two, two steps, ten steps, you will get food in some, you know, Annakshetra. But not like that in those days. So Radha Goswami would go to Mathura. And uh, Advaita Acharya had, from his deep meditation, uh, below the Dvadasha Aditya Teel, he had manifested Madan Gopalji, who is not different from Madan, Madan Mohanji. And then when he went to Navadvip, on the desire and call of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he gave his Madan Gopalji to a Brahmin, Chaturvedi Brahmin called Purushottam Chaube, who had his wife and family and own house and everything. Very great devotee of the Lord, both of them. So they were serving. And in that house, our Sanadan Goswami happened to go to beg. And Madan Gopalji, Madan Mohanji, was such that at times he would be in the deity form 
and at times he would be protection he would appear you know as a boy as a coward boy and play with bridwasi boys at the bank of jamuna in mathura and uh, the mother that the wife of purushottam chobe had great maternal affection vatsalya bhav towards madan gopal ji so she would you know chastise him show stick to him scold him call him at home because hey you are playing so much naughty boy when are you going to come home i'm waiting for you prasad is ready aren't you coming i'm coming to chase you know i'm going to chase you with stick like that she would chase and bring madan gopal home and then make him sit and then have a stick in her hand and feed him food and say eat don't look here and there and that one day when he uh, accident and uh, no, coincidentally he was begging at the door of that mata ji she was seen by sanatan goswami she was scolding madan gopal ji and madan gopal ji apparently was trembling in fear and eating like a obedient boy out of the fear of the mother so all this leela you observed and then he said maya this is not the way to serve the lord there are rules and regulations with which you should serve this is not the way this totally unorthodox way of serving the lord we chant mantras and we sit down and pray and then lord eats but that lady was so simple hearted and great devotee that uh, in those days of course they would res respect sadhu so much so she was like completely overwhelmed she felt oh my god i have been scolding him showing him stick chastising him for such a long time now and all the while i was making a mistake an aparad a blunder i should stop it everything immediately so she changed her mood she was suddenly she became overwhelmed with a mood of awe and reverence you know praying folding chanting sutras and everything so fine that day that that day's past time got over radha goswami got his bhiksha and he went and he slept under a tree and nanda and lo and behold the lord madan gopal madan mohan ji came in his dream and said you have spoiled everything i was so happy <laughs> at the my mother's house and i was enjoying for so many years you came with your great knowledge of scriptures and you spoiled everything we had such a sweet mellow of love my mother and myself i'm like a son and i was really enjoying her scolding and her feeding me with so much of love and now that she only offers prayers to me i am just completely bored now you have ended my era of happiness with mata ji now now that you have ended it it is not restartable so please tomorrow again you go and she will give it give me to you and now i will come with you because you have spoiled everything there now i will i will stay under your rules and regulations <laughs> so then she then madan mohan ji also came in the dreams of the mother and said mother mother tomorrow the same sanyasi will come and say bhavati bikshan dehi and that time you offer me to him so mother started crying in the dream only oh now it is a proof what swami ji was telling me yesterday now it is lord is confirming that i was doing aparad all the while he is unhappy with me wants to leave me but what to do whatever his desire is my desire i want to surrender to his desire so, so like that she was crying and she woke up and lo and behold sanyasi was there at the door step bhavati bikshan dehi so she picked up madan gopal ji's dt and gave it to sanyasi and sanyasi was swami started walking and madan gopal ji is speaking to him and goswami ji said see you are used to eating sweet meats and makhan and everything else i am a beggar i only get some you no know, wheat flour and i soak it in jamuna water i make some balls and i directly put it in the fire and bake it there is no salt there is no spice there is no uh, butter or oil or ghee or anything i said okay okay whatever you eat whatever you get whatever you make i am fine with it I see be careful today you will say yes yes to or you will say i want makhan i want ghee i want buttermilk i want yogurt i want sweet meats i want sandesh i'm sorry so no 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 i'm happy and plus mother had a good house at least a small 
house to stay in some roof over, over you. I don't have enough roof. I have, I have a tree on my head. <laughs> I stay changing the tree also every day. So wherever you stay, I'm fine. Whatever you feed, I'm fine. I will not demand anything. So they went, he took, he took them to he took him to Vrindavan. And then he was staying under a tree. And every day begging, after a few days begging, bringing something. And some time passed. And then one day Madan Gopal tells Sanatan Goswami, Hey Sanatan, what is this? So many days you are feeding me dry, tasteless, you know, saltless, sugarless, fatless, wati. Huh? What is this? How many days I am staying like this? Put some salt at least. So I told you, I knew. One day you will ask for salt, one day you will ask for sugar, one day you will ask for sweets. It is not possible for me. I have already been clear. Our contract is very clear. So he said, uh, so shall I make my own arrangement? Yeah, yeah, you can do whatever you want. You are free. But I am not going to bother myself to get salt. You know, how can I ask? Hey, mom, hey, mother, Bhavati Bhikshan Dehi, put some salt also, huh? put some ghee also, huh? put some this also. I cannot do that. I am a sannyasi. Whatever comes, I have to accept the mercy of the all of mercy of you. So as soon as Sanatan Goswami said, yes, you can make your arrangements. The Lord is very tricky and very smart. You know, He inspired one Ramachandra Kapoor from Multan. Today it is in Pakistan. But that time it was in Punjab. Punjab was a big, big state that time. It was in India, Bharat Varsha. So he left from there in the waterway. The waterway was connecting and he, he had a boatload of salt. A lot of salt packets over his body also. And he came boating and boating and boating all the way to Vrindavan. And he was on the way to Agra where he was supposed to sell the salt. But by the divine arrangement and desire of Mother Gopalji, his boat got stuck near today where uh, Mother Mohan Temple is. Somewhere, somewhere near that area. And just like going round and round and round in Jamuna, you know, like a whirlwind type of uh, Tufan was there, storm was there. Somehow he jumped in the water uh, and, uh, and saved his life and came running to the banks of the river. And then, sure enough, Madan Gopalji was playing with coward boys there at the banks of Jamuna. And he said, My boat is sinking, my boat is sinking, please save me. So he said, There's one great devotee on the top of this small mountain. He's Sanatan Goswami. Please, by his blessings, your boat can be saved. So, poor fellow was in desperate condition. He ran on the teal. Teal means hillock. And he sure met Sanatan Goswami and said, my boat is sinking. And he bowed down to the uh, small deity of Madan Gopalji, which was there on the mountain also, small mountain, while Madan Gopalji was playing in the, you know, Pratyaksha form. So he bowed down. When he bowed down, some salt packets fell from his pocket, you know, on the ground. And then he said, Maharaj, please save me. He said, Madan Gopalji will save you. So from down, Madan Gopal is telling, Sanatan Goswami will save you. From up, Sanatana Goswami is saying, Madan Gopal will save you. In the meantime, when he surrendered himself to Sanatan Goswami, the Lord took out his you know, waist belt, a cloth, of course, a cloth which is tied up in the waist. He removed that and he moved it in circle, circular fashion and manipulated the breeze and pulled the boat by his power to the bank of Jamuna. So by the time he came down, the boat was already at the bank safe, you know. So he's so happy. He just bowed down to the boy also and he thanked the sannyasi. He said, I will go to Agra and I'll, I'll come back and I'll offer everything to you because anyway it was all gone. My life was gone. Everything is a new life and new everything. And this part of the story, many people don't know, which you please hear carefully. He drove his boat to Agra through water of Jamuna. And there, by the mercy of Madan Gopalji, Madan Mohanji, the salt was converted into Kapoor, into camphor. And camphor is much more valuable than the salt. It will yield much more money. And why this happened? This is a lesson for us to learn. When you decide that my wealth will be utilized for service to the Lord, then Lord will multiply your wealth unbelievably and unlimitedly. So because he had done Sankalpa and Mundavan that I will sell everything and give all the wealth to you, Maharaj. So the Lord converted 
like less valuable salt into very very valuable camphor high quality camphor in camphor also we have many qualities now also we have some petroleum based camphor which gives smoke smoky condition and we have bhim seni kapoor which is very very pure and it gives no no black suit or no black fumes but only pure air it creates something like that fragrant and purest kapoor was created from the salt and he you know made unbelievable money because he had one idea that my salt will fetch me so much money but it was multiplied by many times because it was camphor now so he brought a huge amount of money and as per his promise and word and sankalpa he came to vrindavan and then he offered all that to sanatan goswami and sanatan goswami had renounced all those things in much much bigger quantity than what he was offering him so they were not not going to tempt him any more so he said i am a sanyasi i live under a tree and uh, i don't need this wealth but you are keen on serving or giving this wealth please use this wealth to build the temple for madan mohan ji the madan mohan ji is living under a tree on the hillock the hillock where krishna was heated by 12 sun sun gods after subduing kaliya in the cold water of jamuna in the dwapar yuga at the end of dwapar yuga so that holy place uh, sanatan goswami was doing his bhajan so the lord got salt because some salt packets fell out of the pocket of uh, ramchandra kapoor and the lord also got salt and in the meantime the temple construction sankalpa was done <clears throat> and while the temple was under construction uh, sanatan goswami traveled in rajbhumi and uh, sometime he resided at the bank of pavan sarovar at pavan sarovar he was doing such tapasya such tapasya three three days four four days he would not even drink water he would get completely immersed in doing bhajan chanting the holy name of the lord so much immersed that he would not have any consciousness any awareness of thirst or hunger or sleep so fourth day a blue boy came a coward boy small boy very sweet looking boy with a pot of milk and he said oh baba i just came to know that you are not eating anything you are fasting for so many days and in my village no one fasts if anybody fasts then the women of the village inform me that somebody is fasting here so i feel it's my own duty to come and you know serve that person so i have come i have come to know you are fasting so please drink this milk this is my most humble request to you so sanatan goswami was totally enamored by the beauty and the voice the sweet you know nectarian voice of this boy and uh, so he drank the milk and boy said i'll come back to pick up the pot and the milk was so nectarian that sanatan goswami was trembling with hair standing on the end with voice choked up tears flowing from his eyes and he was wondering where is that boy where is that boy i want to see that boy <clears throat> and the boy came in the dream and said i am i am sham sundar i am madan gopal please drink the milk don't fast like this so this past time took place at the bank of pavan sarovar and then after that he started residing in govardhan and govardhan uh, has two parikramas one parikrama is short parikrama that we do it is 22 kilometers prajbasis do even that in two parts small parikrama big parikrama so that parikrama starts from radhakund and ends at dangati and the bigger one starts radhakund and goes all around kuchrika lota baba and come back again to radhakund but there was something called a dirga parikrama which was 40 kilometers which included petha gaon chandra sarovar chaturbhuj narayan mandir like that <clears throat> and that parikrama sanatan goswami would do every day without fail and every single day he was doing he was doing he was doing and many years passed and sanatan goswami became almost 70 year old and he would not even walk nicely could not even walk properly but he would still walk limpingly and one day when he was doing that uh, so called difficult walking uh, parikrama again a small coward boy came 
and running baba was walking and boy came like you know dancing running said so, baba why are you walking you whole life you did parikrama you can now rest in your kuti you have perfected your life and baba is walking boy is also walking there is no stopping the boy is saying no this is my my offering to my lord i cannot choose or not choose whatever i's my duty i will keep doing it so the boy couldn't convince him further so boy just disappeared of course you know that boy was krishna so he came back to govardhan climbed the mountain at one point and started playing his flute and one of the tunes of krishna melts the stones so with he played that tune and the stone where he was standing on started melting and his legs started sinking one leg full you know one left leg full and right leg bent so right leg into some few fingers and left leg left foot print full and started melting and started sinking in the stone and that time cow one cow came running as usual cows come running the same tune mesmerizes the cows and same tune also melts the stone the cow came running and stood on the same stone so cow's foot also started sinking in the stone because stone was melting and the stick which the boy was holding to hurt the cows also started sinking in the stone after some time the he started he, he stopped playing the flute and then the melting stopped so when the melting stopped there was nice footprint of krishna standing in tribanga position and the cow's hoof print was there and the stick print was there and everything was there so krishna the boy again took form of the cowboy boy lifted that shila and started running where uh, sanatan goswami was walking and he caught him on the road and said baba please you take this shila and you do sakam ambulation to this shila baba kept walking walking and you know krishna walked all over govardhan whatever remaining part of the parikrama so baba was not not listening and finally when the parikrama ended at chakreshwar mahadev uh, <clears throat> the boy kept the shila in the house of sanatan goswami the bhajan kuti which is there today also at uh, chakreshwar mahadev in front of lord mahadev and he left an event and the night the same boy appeared in the dream of sanatan goswami and it was like very obvious to sanatan goswami that this boy is krishna himself he revealed himself as krishna and said it is my desire that you have walked your life all the way to govardhan parikrama 40 km every day now you stop and do parikrama sakam ambulation four times four times you can do and it will it will give you the benefit of doing this 40 km of dirga parikrama of govardhan so when it was directly from the mouth of krishna in the dream sanatan goswami stopped he started doing four parikramas to this beautiful shila every day in the kuti itself so this is what what took place and then uh, goswami ji also was writing books there doing his bhajan also there but there were so many mosquitoes that sanatan goswami could not bear one day although he was such a renounced person but he just could not bear the disturbance caused by mosquitoes in his bhajan and his writing so he just packed up and he died going away and lord mahadev chakreshwar mahadev he is one of the important lord shiva residing at govardhan was very happy having the association of a pure vaishnav like sanatan goswami so he took a form of brahmin boy and started chasing walking sanatan goswami he said baba why are you going please don't go we are so happy to have you here he said what to do beta so many mosquitoes are biting me i am not able to do my bhajan i don't mind mosquitoes but it is disturbing in my bhajan so i am going away from this place he said baba please i request you give me one day one day tonight only you stay here i'll just do something about it so the boy was so sweet so his request was so sweet so goswami ji decided to stay one night anyway one more night after hundreds of nights is okay and lord shiva straight went to the demigod loka the demigod who was controlling mosquitoes or insects rather not mosquitoes there are mosquitoes which control your intestines your eyes 
moon god controls your mind heart is controlled by some demi god you know apana vayu is controlled by one vayu and so udana vayu prana vayu everything is controlled by our whole existence whatever we are doing vacha is controlled by one demi god everybody is controlled everything is controlled by some demi god so he went straight to the demi god which was controlling the insects he ordered as mahadev was lord shiva is dev of all dev mahadev when his father worships him he ordered him ki where i am staying in that whole chakreshwar mahadev area there should be no insect what to speak of mosquitoes no insect should be there and lo and behold from that day onwards all the insects mosquitoes vanished from that place and goswami ji continued to stay there because lord shiva so was so fond of having association so by his mercy and power today also that area is free of insects believe me today also it's not that only sanatan goswami even today also the same thing is happening so then after that uh, he started doing parikrama once in a month on pordima along with bridge basis and sanatan goswami what to say sanatan was so close to so many you know uh, bridge basis like family members he would inquire about their wedding of daughters he would inquire about the crops in the fields rains well being of husband wife children and other aspects of family life they were like a dear most guru father of all the brijwasis they were like a bona fide guru of all the brijwasis you know they were very heartfully accept him as guru and love him like anything so he would do uh, once in a month parikrama <clears throat> so after many many uh, purnimas when guru purnima came in one one particular year they all gathered to begin the parikrama and at that time uh they saw sanatan goswami in deep meditation in the erect posture in lotus position so they thought maybe swami ji is busy in meditation he'll come out of meditation and we'll start the parikrama and while they were waiting many people more gathered there they were also waiting they were also getting finally it was like noon time much much time passed ahead of their schedule so they sent one leader please go and wake him up and the moment the person went inside and touched so goswami ji just fell down i mean just fell down because he was no more he already left his body and nobody realized that he thought he is in meditation so a wave of despair spread all over the bridge beginning with the people who gathered over there they were so sad almost life had gone out of their life and they lifted the body of uh, sanatan goswami and put it on a palanquin and did govardhan parikrama all the way with his body on their shoulders and then they brought the body to vrindavan under the uh, dwadasha aditya til and gave him samadhi sanskar there where he also residing there in the sanyas Uh, samadhi <clears throat> samadhi mandir and much later after he left this world the temple of madan mohan ji was completed sanatan goswami had uh, given over to um, krishnadas brahmachari one of his prominent disciples the charge of serving madan mohan ji under a tree of course and later on after he left many years after the temple was completed and he was one of the first temples in braj bhumi before the renovation began the first temple was erected was madan mohan temple and sufficient to say in short that uh, madan mohan ji you know connects us with his lotus feet helps us to disconnect us from the material world and that whole uh, process of sambandha the acharya is uh, sanatan goswami by his mercy we connect with the lord and get disconnected from the material world gradually shanai shanai so let us offer our humble obeisances and prayers to uh, sanatan goswami and to his lord also will offer prayers jayatam sarato pangor mama manda matirgati mat sarvasva padam moja radha madan mohana oh my lord i am lame and fallen please give shelter to me at your lotus feet so we'll from this we'll move on to <clears throat> next goswami that is lokanath goswami and lokanath goswami was the uh, first goswami came to vrindavan at the time of chaitanya mahaprabhu's uh, presence in the world 
they were all in Ch- uh, jagannath puri with chaitanya mahaprabhu and one day lord chaitanya mahaprabhu in jagannath puri called luknath goswami and told him that please go to vrindavan so at that time when luknath goswami was preparing to go to vrindavan on the order of chaitanya mahaprabhu his dear most friend bhugarbha goswami approached chaitanya mahaprabhu and told my dear lord you are sending my friend away from here can i accompany him and one significant point we should learn the lord chaitanya mahaprabhu was very happy extremely happy to see the love between bhugarbha goswami and sana and loknath goswami the supreme lord and his acharyas his pure devotees they always are very happy when the devotees have deep genuine friendship amongst each other what pleases the lord is not actually the worship that we offer him more than our worship that which is very dear to him of course he is pleased when we worship him but more than our worship to the lord's deity or lord himself is the love that we show and the care and concern that we show to fellow devotees that is extremely pleasing to the lord because when you love the lord you love his devotees and you love the devotees you care for them you take care of them you serve them the lord was very happy he said yes yes bugarba you also can go so both of them first entered the vrindavan of that time which was uh, completely in a forest form now everything was lost there was nothing no trace what bajranab had reestablished and renovated and established forests and temples and uh, uh, leela stalis and deities everything was ap- apparently lost so bhugarbha goswami and sanatan goswami loknath goswami were wandering in the forest calling out the names of the lord shedding tears of love and they were loknath goswami was completely in uh, condition beyond the senses <clears throat> there was no you know uh, uh, cognizance of the material body or senses or hunger or thirst or sleep he would simply cry tears of love and separation from the lord calling out the lord and he would wander from forest to forest and one time he was in um, khadirvan and in khadirvan there is a place called umrao where one time umrao means the queen the word umrao means queen so radharani had become a queen there one time as the queen of vrindavan dham and gopis were serving as ministers like lalita vishakha and had taken their ministerial positions so there is a nice leela there so that's why this place is called umrao and in that place our loknath goswami was performing bhajan and there is one kund called kishori kund over there so in kishori kund uh, he was performing bhajan at the, at the banks of kishori kund and suddenly from the kishori kund appeared two sweet chabbi deities and they straight came in his hands and they have a, they gave a big smile to loknath goswami and loknath goswami was very happy to see and then the lord said this is this spoke to lord radha vinod spoke that we want to go with you so loknath ji said i don't have anything i am a fakir i am just running around here and there i don't have a house i don't have proper food facilities I'm just wandering crying i am a madman how do i take care of you he said no problem you make a jholi you make a bag and hang me in the bag in your neck and you walk and i will be walking with you i'll be happy to be with you because he smiled he was named radha vinod very happy huh? it was said that loknath goswami would cry tears of love and separation and radha vinod were constantly being bathed by the tears of loknath goswami and finally loknath goswami wandering wandering he came to vrindavan and he settled down in the banks of jamuna and then <clears throat> one more thing loknath goswami uh, initiated narottam das thakur in umrao village because he was a prince from kheturi gram and he was instructed by lord chaitanya mahaprabhu that you go to vrindavan and find out loknath goswami and take initiation from him now narottam das kafir thakur was so qualified that chaitanya mahaprabhu was shouting his name before his arrival only before he appeared in this world and then he gave darshan to him in dreams and told him go to vrindavan after initiation i mean after giving darshan to him anugraha so chaitanya the loknath goswami 
I rejected him. He said, I am I'm not in the state of giving initiation to anybody or taking care of or training anybody. I am not in this, my senses. I cannot take care of anybody. So one time, two time, three time, then Narutan Das Thakur was cleaning the stool and the place of passing stool of Loknath Goswami and putting water there with tears in eyes. So one day Loknath Goswami caught him because he didn't know who was cleaning the place in early dark morning. And he hid himself in the bushes and found this young princely boy cleaning the place of the stool and putting water with tears in eyes of love. Sriko so went and embraced him from behind, caught hold of him. Why are you doing this? You are a prince. I'm a I'm a lowly person. You are you are fit to become a king. And why are you doing this menial service to me? So Narutanda said, What is the use of my being a prince or whatever? If I don't have the mercy of my spiritual master, if I don't get acceptance from my spiritual master, my whole life is a waste. So this is only wealth for my life to serve you. Looking at his determination, dedication, love, devotion, Lokanath Goswami initiated him. There and there itself in the middle of the morning, early morning. But he said, I cannot take care of you. I'm not in the state of mind to train you or take care of your disciple. Please go to Jiva Goswami in Vrindavan and in, on my behalf, he will train you. So Naradam Das Thakur went to Jiva Goswami in Seva Kunj area and he was trained by Jiva Goswami. And Lugnath Goswami finally came to Vrindavan and then he left his body in the bank of Jamuna where his body was kept in Samadhi in the temple today which is known as Gokulananda temple. Lugnath Goswami's very body was laid in Samadhi there. And later on, even Narutundash Thakur's uh, Pushpa Samadhi was built over there. So, a significant point to know about Lugnath Goswami. Lugnath Goswami was a very, very, very renounced sannyasi and completely immersed in the mellow of love and separation. I think he was Kasturi Manjiri, if I'm not mistaken. So, he was the associate of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also associate of uh, Sri Krishna in his uh, Krishna Leela. And one more thing I remember about Lokanath Goswami, when Rupa Goswami one time desired to serve Srinathji, you know, Gopal. Uh, Gopal, Srinathji did a trick. He spread a rumor that Muslims are coming to attack. So the Pujaris, Vajwasis lifted uh, Srinathji and brought them to, uh, you know, Mathura. So Rupa Goswami came to know that Sinaji is in Mathura now, on the ground level, not on Govardhan. So I can now meet, I can see him darshan. So Rupa Goswami brought everybody to Mathura. And in that, when Lokanath Goswami was there, Bhugarbha Goswami was there, all the other Goswamis, second generation, third generation Vaishnavas, everybody was there, they served Sinaji for one full month in Mathura. And then everybody came to know it was only rumor. So they very ceremoniously brought uh, Sinaji back and put him on the mountain of Govardhan. So Lugnath Goswami was there. Also when Janava Mataji came in, Bhakti Ratnakar explains, when Janava Mataji came to Vrindavan at that time, also to meet her, Lugnath Goswami was there, along with Bhugarbha Goswami, six Goswamis, and most prominent Vaishnavas of Vrindavan Dham, that time Gaudiya Vaishnavas. They all took association of Janava Ma. So this is the brief story of uh, Lugnath Goswami. And then we are talking about Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Gopal Bhatta Goswami was the only uh, South Indian Goswami and the youngest of all Goswamis. And this little Gopal was the son of uh, Venkata Bhatta, the bona fide Pujari of Sri Ranganaji at Sri Rangam. And uh, uh, Venkata Bhatta was chief Pujari and he would serve Ranganaji. And one day, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his Madhya Leela, in his South India tour, uh, he came to the house of Venkata Bhatta at the beginning of Chaturmasya. And he did Kirtan in the temple of Ranganath, an ecstatic Kirtan who attracted everybody in, uh, in Sri Rangam at the bank of Kaveri River. And everybody got enamored and Venkat Bhatta also got attracted and he said, Mahaprabhuji, please come to my house and spend your Chaturmasya at my house. So Mahaprabhuji very lovingly accepted the invitation and he <clears throat> started staying at the home of Venkat Bhatta. In 2005, 
uh, in 2005 south india yatra taken by radhana swami maharaj from iskon chopadi i got the good fortune of staying in the same house of venkat bhatta for 5 days during the yatra the goswami ji murli bhatta who was the 17th generation of uh, venkat bhatta had kindly allowed me to stay in his house which was under his you know, care and, and and control maybe so in the chaturmasya of 120 days which chaitanya mahaprabhu stayed there every morning he would go to sri rangam mandir and he would do ecstatic kirtan dancing with love and all the uh, sri rangam vasis would get mad hold the day dancing with chaitanya mahaprabhu unlimited hours of daytime and then in the end in the evening mahaprabhu would return to the home of venkata bhatta and he would whole night narrate the pastimes of the lord sri krishna to venkata bhatta to gopal his son to gopal but venkata bhatta's brother prabodhanand saraswati so the four of them would spend every night together day time dancing with chaitanya mahaprabhu night time whole night sitting and listening to the stories narrations of krishna's pastime from the very lotus mouth of lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and then in this ecstatic way the child was inducted into krishna consciousness child got such a beautiful samskar of serving lord chaitanya mahaprabhu listening from chaitanya mahaprabhu in the very private confidential association in the middle of the night every single day for 120 days what else you expect then getting enamored and attracted from the core of the heart gopal was completely ecstatic and when 120 days were over and mahaprabhu chaitanya started leaving sri rangam because chaturmasya was over the boy started following him i want to go with you he would not leave so chaitanya mahaprabhu very gravely explained the boy gopal you cannot come with me now you have your parents to serve you please serve your parents they are getting old please serve them as long as they live in this material world you please take care of them as a very obedient son and when they will pass away from this world that time you come to vrindavan and you can understand that he was an 11 years old boy at that time very young boy in one sense some say he was 5 year old some say he was 11 that doesn't matter but he was a young boy and he was such a obedient boy you know generally children are very you know very ziddi they once they decide something they don't listen to anybody but chaitanya mahaprabhu instructed the boy obediently followed the instruction went back home like we say keeping stone in the heart heart is saying i want to go with chaitanya mahaprabhu but the order of chaitanya mahaprabhu says go back home so keeping a big stone on the heart he returned home and took care of his father and mother with great love and affection and devotion and duty bound condition so we have to understand what is more important in life is not to be with your beloved or ishta what is important in life is to follow the instruction of your ishta you are worshipable lord we want to be with him there is not very important not very pleasing what is important is to follow the instructions given by your beloved worshipable lord what will please the lord is not sticking on to him in vicinity physical vicinity but what will please the lord is following in the order of the lord even far far away from the lord the lord will be with you in very much personal presence if one follows the instructions verbatim given by the lord <clears throat> in the course of time his parents left this world now was the time to leave and go to vrindavan now one more thing to understand very carefully please listen the attachment was to be with chaitanya mahaprabhu but the order was to serve the parents and then go to vrindavan not where chaitanya mahaprabhu was or would be and very well this boy knew of course he grew little further older wherever uh, where very clearly he knew the lord chaitanya mahaprabhu is in jagannath puri but the order was to go to vrindavan so heart is saying go to jagannath puri to meet my lord 
But the order is saying go to Vrindavan. So order is more important than the desire. Both are in connection with Krishna only. But amongst the two, most important is to follow the instruction. So he went to Vrindavan and he was burning in separation from the Lord. And devotees would go up and down Vrindavan and Jagannath Puri. So devotees informed Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, your Gopal is burning in separation. We cannot see him so much in pain. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, out of love for Gopal, he sent his uh, sitting place, you know, asana and his vastra to pacify his fire of separation. And some devotees conveyed those gifts of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Gopal. And to some extent, he was like pacified, but not fully. He would still cry in great separation. So, looking at the mood of separation that Gopal had, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in the dream of Gopal and said, Hey Gopal, please go to Nepal. Go to Gandaki River and I will, you will find me there. I will give you darshan there. And today, if you have to go from Delhi or Vrindavan to Nepal, you will go to Delhi by train or bus and take a flight to Nepal, Kathmandu. And take a vehicle to go to Pokhara and go to the mountains from Pokhara and reach Kali Gandaki River and take bath and hot springs and cold springs. But in those days, Sanyas would walk all the way. So Gopal Bhatta Goswami walked thousands of miles. I think not less than uh, 2,500 miles from today's calculation. All the way walking, 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 went to Kali Gandaki River and he had a commandal. And he uh, went to take bath because whenever you see a river, you have to respect the river by taking bath, doing achman, offering pranams, prayers. That's the etiquette. No Vaishnava should pass a river without offering prayers. So he took bath, he took a dip, and he was trying to offer arghya by collecting water in the kamandal. And lo and behold, 12 Shaligram Shilas entered in the pot. Now, generally speaking, Shila is a stone. And what do you think? The stones not, don't float in the water. They are at, always at the bottom of the river. So what we expect? We know that Shaligram Shilas are available in Kali Gandaki, but they are not floating in the river. They are always at the bottom of the river. And there are people, Nepalese, you know, they are trained. They go under water and go to the bottom and pick up the Shilas and they bring and they give you or they sell to you. There's a there's a uh, insect called Vajrakita. It's supposed to be the incarnation of Vishwakarma the architect of the demigods. He appears there as an insect which the stones which follow, which fall from the surrounding mountains, ordinary stones, they are carved by this insect into Shaligram Shilas. And that too from within, somehow, it's a miracle of the Lord. So ordinary stones uh, slide from the mountain and go fall in the river and then this uh, Kitak, this uh, insect, carves he carves the stones into Shaligram Shilas. May I request uh, you to keep your videos on, please? I mean, I can't talk to the blank screens. It's very frustrating, actually. Please, if you are sleeping, please wake up and give me darshan and encourage me to speak to you, not to your names. Our philosophy is personal. We are all living entities, spirit souls, and our connection with life is personal, not through our screens. So, uh, so such shilas were there at the bottom of the river and suddenly floating the shilas entered the kamandal of Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So he thought, you know, sometimes you pick up and you find some dirt or some, some stones, you throw back. So he threw them back in the water. And second time he wanted to pick up, again the shilas entered the kamandal. Again he thought it may be why they are coming. Like, I don't want stones, I want water to offer argya. And third time when he did that, 12 shilas again entered. And at that time, the voice came up in the sky. I told you I will meet you in Nepal at the bank of the Kali Gandaki river. What is coming to you in Kamandal is me. I am myself entering. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is speaking in voice. At that time, Gopal Bhatta understood the mystery. Why the stones were floating and coming in his kandal, Kamandal. So then, Lord ordered him, please go 
this is me myself because shaligram is not different from krishna so this is myself take me back to vrindavan and worship all the 12 shilas and i will accept your worship so taking the 12 shilas gopal bhatta mango swami walked all the way back to vrindavan and started worshiping this shila and then one fine day what happened one rich businessman came vaishnava of course rich man and he had brought uh, so many of uh, dresses for the lord and jewelry and you no know, and clothes and everything ankle belts and waist belts and every single thing complete set and many sets of such uh, things he had brought for each every each and every goswami's deity he wanted to present so he came to sanatan goswami offered him to madan mohan ji and you know he went to govind ji rupa goswami he went to gopinath he went to all the deities of vrindavan and he finally came to gopal bhatta goswami and offered him also clothes like you know shirts and dhotis and pants and and mukuts and everything so gopal bhatta goswami said how do i what do i do in brijvasi language he say my lord is like kadi pakodi now what is kadi pakodi the pakodi is floating in the kadi and kadi is thick and yellow in color so pakodi is all covered with uh, yellow kadi so my lord is like kadi pakodi you know he is like always covered with chandan he looks like pakodi in the kadi of brijvasis So how do I wear? I don't know where his hands are, where his mouth is, where his head is. So how do I wear all your clothes? I don't know what is the use of all your clothes to me because my Lord is gold matol, is rounded, round and round and round, no hands and no feet. But the man was determined. He said, "No, you. I have brought it for you. You have to, you have to wear him. You have to accept it at least." So out of his love, he accepted, and he was wondering, "Oh, I wish. How I wish. How I wish. My Lord would have had hands and limbs." i would have dressed him up nicely i don't even know where his mouth is when i feed him every day so this thought was coming every day in mind and suddenly after some time narasimha chaturdashi came and narasimha chaturdashi came that time uh, the gaudiya parampara is to open shrimad bhagavatam 7th canto and read the whole past time of prahlad charitra and narasimha's appearance and killing of hiranya kashipu and you know that's how we celebrate we narrate and we perform dramas and we have prasad and abhishek and everything so gopala bhatta goswami in his temple of open bhagavatam lot of devotees came he narrated and a time came when prahlad pointed to the pillar and said yes my lord is there in the pillar also at that time instantly tatkshana at just the indication of prahlad the lord appeared in half man half lion form in the pillar which prahlad also saw before even the pillar was broken prala took darshan of the lord in the pillar called his mother of hiranyakashipu and then hiranyakashipu banged his left fist on the pillar and pillar got broken into pieces and lord came out roaring this whole thing is being read by gopal bhatta sir a sudden thought came are if by one indication of one finger the lord can appear from a pillar that's not a normal place to for the lord to come out from if you can come out of you know a pillar which was also instantly indicated to not selected okay i'll today at 12 o'clock in the afternoon i'll tell this pillar and the lord has time to prepare himself to go in that pillar it's not like that instantly lord appeared so why not from my shaligram shila what's the problem what is difficult for the lord so with the thought he completed the story closed the book day has ended festival ended and time came to you know put the lord to rest he put the lord to rest how do you serve shaligram you you offer him chandan you bathe him in jamuna jal ganga jal or you know pancha panchamruta then you massage him with scented oil then you offer tulsi offer chandan put a tilak on him and and feed him like that simple worship and time came to sleep means you remove all tulsi and you put a rumal on that put a napkin or a handkerchief on that and request the lord to go to rest the so lord goes to rest so he put all 12 uh, no handkerchief on all the shaligram shilas and put them to rest and he went to sleep next morning he woke up in brahma murta he saw one of the napkin had been raised you know like something you hang something and the uh, napkin flows down one of them have one napkin was raised so very curious but he couldn't touch them because he had not taken bath so he ran to ganga mother yamuna and took bath and came running back and you know woke the lord up by whatever mantras and mudras And lo and behold, he saw 
that the raised napkin there was lord's full fledged fully developed form with very delicate limbs very small and beautiful shining shaligram material the same shaligram shining material was there with which the body was formed and his eyes and his arms and his fingers and his toes and his uh, the three fold three fold bending form was so beautiful gopal bhatt ko sami couldn't believe his eyes what had happened the shila was right there behind near the foot of lord and from the front of the shila damodar shila the lord had taken a beautiful shape a beautiful form and appeared here ran to call the goswami is called rupa goswami sarada goswami everybody came running to see the miracle and rupa goswami said he saw the he beheld the beautiful form of this deity and he said the feet of this deity is same like same like madan mohan ji his chest is same like gopinath ji his lotus face is just like govind ji so all the three principal deities of ours they have manifested in one small deity of yours o gopal so i name him as radha ramana bhagwan radha ramana dev bhagwan ki chai so the story which i am going to tell now onwards please listen very carefully so gopal what was so happy he wanted to celebrate a big ceremony of his arrival lord's manifestation so then he went to the market today also this market is there gopinath bazar and he went and took loan from few few shopkeepers he said i want to celebrate the lord's appearance and please give me a loan i'll return you in 15 days and he arranged shobha yatra he arranged abhishekam he arranged bhogas he arranged katha dance kirtan big procession everything was such a beautiful ceremony of appearance of lord radharaman dev this happened on the very next day of narsimha chaturdashi that is vaishakha purnima vaishakha chaturdashi is narsimha chaturdashi very next day at early morning this happened so the whole day the ceremony went on i think many days it went on and then everything was over but not a single penny came as donation so that he could return the money which he had taken loan from the shopkeepers and the 14th night it was going to be 15th day next day nothing was collected so he had such a sleepless night what would i what would i how would i face this shopkeeper what would he think of vaishnavism and vaishnavas he will lose the faith in vaishnavas that they don't keep their words the dignity of vaishnavism will be at stake so he could not sleep he cried the whole night and next day he thought let me be honest and uh, beg forgiveness and ask for some more time so he went to the first shopkeeper and he said my dear lord i'm very sorry i couldn't fulfill my word i wanted to return your money today but i have not got a single penny please give me some more time and the shopkeeper fell at the feet of gopal bhatta goswami and said my dear lord why are you embarrassing me yesterday you came and returned my money why are you making me feel so embarrassed he was wondering how this happened but he couldn't understand he went to the next shopkeeper told the same thing he also fell in his feet and told i'm sorry maharaj you yesterday you came like that he went three to four shopkeepers he understood that lord radha raman bhagwan had taken the form of gopal bhatt goswami and paid the loan of gopal bhatt goswami to the shopkeepers in gopinath bazar and gopal bhatt goswami fell unconscious in great tears he couldn't believe to keep the dignity of his devotee the lord has taken his form and paid the loan of what he has taken from the shopkeepers so this is the love between the lord and his devotee so gopal bhatt goswami so overwhelmed with this wonderful experience and uh, it is also explained gopal bhatt goswami also stayed some time in sanket village sanket village is in between exactly in halfway in between uh barsana and nandgaon 3 and 1/2 kilometers from each side and there is a bhajan kutir of gopal bhatt goswami and gopal bhatt goswami was uh, guna manjiri you know <clears throat> he was guna manjiri and um, guna manjiri also has his entourage you know every manjiri has three uh, sorry every manjiri has one crore assistant gopis one 100 Uh, 100 100 1000 is 1 crore seven zeros on one maybe it is called as uh, uh, 
10 million maybe 10 million is one crore so like the 10 million assistants each each manjari has so gopal bhatta is guna manjari came in the male form but many of his or her assistants came in female form so like the uh, coward men would stop their girls to join krishna for aslila because this was young sanyasi the their fathers the was the coward men in nandgaon could not let their young girls to go and associate with gopal bhatta goswami they thought this baba is you know enamoring our girls and our girls may be contaminated by the association of young men is all uh, they should we should prevent them so it said many of them left their bodies so they were eternal associates of guna manjari they wanted to associate with their master or their mistress you can say anyways <clears throat> so this was the past time told by me to uh, by one goswami ji of nandgaon that gopal bhatta goswami is was a dear dear darling of all nandgaon masis all nandgaon masis would respect him as their guru and gopal bhatta goswami also stayed for some time at radha kund and there is a bhajan kutir of gopal bhatta goswami at radha kund at the very bank of radha kund he worshiped lord krishna in the bank. so gopal bhatta goswami was the only goswami when uh, krishna das kaviraj goswami came to take blessings from him to write chaitanya charitamrut gopal bhatta goswami said yes i give you my blessings but with one asterisk condition apply that my name should never appear anywhere in your narrations so you read the whole chaitanya charitamrut you will not find a mention of gopal bhatta goswami anywhere in chaitanya charitamrut what we find about gopal bhatta goswami is in bhakti ratnakar and many other scriptures which other goswamis wrote there we find the mention of gopal bhatta goswami so here is a person who is the youngest of all goswamis most wonderful humble dedicated soul and krishna reciprocated with him by manifesting himself from a stone of shaligram shila so we offer our heartfelt obeisances to gopal bhatta goswami whose uh, samadhi is right next to the appearance place of radharaman ji and the temple of radharaman ji is on right side of that place on the left side of that place there is samadhi of gopal bhatta goswami there only his body was laid down near the bank of yamuna just next to gokulanand mandir hare krishna hare krishna 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 hari 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 ram hari ram 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 hari hari so if anybody of you have any questions i can take questions connected with my lecture or anything else that you want to ask Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Oh, Krishna, so much nectar, Prabhu. So much nectar. Such a beautiful katha, Prabhu. So, so amazing, Prabhu. Just amazing. Katha, and with the katha, so many instructions given by our acharyas through, through, through you, Prabhu. So beautiful. I was making points. I was continue making points. I was not, not fast enough to stay behind you, Prabhu. So beautiful. Hare. I'll just, I'll just uh, uh, speak about small points that I, I loved. of course all your katha was so beautiful just amazing i'm amazed prabhu about your uh, what your knowledge of course uh, so many years you are in in the parampara but prabhu you can speak on on these subjects oh, on and on and on prabhu it's it's so beautiful you know is the about uh, um, sanatan goswami we always listen how how much wealth he had and today we get maybe a house on mortgage of 30 years which is uh, maybe half million dollars or whatever and we get popped <laughs> up and we have this this property which probably by that time we are uh, leaving this world we will we'll maybe hopefully pay the mortgage of that house and he was uh, of course uh, super old age and, uh, old age old age takta turnam shesha mandalpati as he said shrenim tada sada tuchavat but he was such in a humble mood and then uh, so beautiful past time of uh, purushottam chobe prabhu so beautiful so amazing just uh, uh, wow i was immersed in that past time how gopal was playing with the mother and then how just amazing prabhu and then such a beautiful um, uh, instruction we get from that merchant uh, when he reached agra and his salt became camphor so when we uh, give back to krishna what we got actually from krishna it get uh, it get multiplied so we should not be worried uh, of uh, doing some pious uh, things and donations and whatever uh, we, we take can questions do we take questions do you have a question okay so we yes, have raised hands yes maybe arjuna mata ji arjuna datar mata ji can ask question can unmute yourself and ask question please arjuna mata ji 
हरे कृष्णा प्रभु आई एम अंतरंग सेवा माता जी वेरी नाइस क्लास प्रभु जी Uh, my question is that uh, as you said that uh, that um, salt became camphor and if we offer the lord whatever we have it gets multiplied but uh, many times we see that devotees they offer everything to the lord they offer their lives to the lord uh, but they are facing a lot of financial problems they are still serving but they are facing <laughs> a lot of financial problems they are problems. so how do i understand this statement डिपेंड ऑन हिम like yudhishthir maharaj like prabhupad also lost everything in his business of pharmacy yudhishthir maharaj lost everything huh? that time his shlokas were repeated again and again tasya ham anugrahami harishye when i anugraha when i offer my mercy to hmm. somebody after the out of real love that i might take away everything what i have given so that my love a beloved devotee just takes my shelter hmm. and then he becomes mine he loses attraction for everything else so to dear most devotees Sri Krishna, yeah. Somebody is mentioning Sudama. Is also an example that when you, when Krishna loves you, you love Krishna, and Krishna starts loving you. Mm-hmm. When Krishna wants you exclusively, and Krishna mm-hmm. wants you to get disconnected from every single thing that distracts from you, Krishna. So uh, one has to understand the mercy can be uh, realized in many different ways. You know, the electricity goes in refrigerator, it cools. It goes in the geyser, it creates hot water. but the mercy manifests in different instruments in different ways so different people need different kind of mercy manifestation so those whom krishna loves he takes everything away so don't worry about that they don't have don't have money financial difficulties special mercy of the lord just thank the lord the lord will finally accept us as his own and take us back to godhead yes krishna. but i see that these devotees prabhu they are uh, uh, when they were in a better situation i felt that their consciousness was much better and now because of the financial situation or sometimes health situation they are more focused on oh how do i get money and how do i pay all these bills what do, what do we need in time of this such kind of crisis is good association hmm. and what we should do when we are in this condition we should take shelter of devotees hmm. so that you know we understand the meaning behind the lord's activities what he is doing with us otherwise uh, if you don't have good association in such situation then we only curse the lord why the lord is doing to me what wrong i have done i am his devotee why should he do it to me and we relate the lord that he gives us all comforts and everything if he becomes devotee but the mm-hmm. higher understanding is when you become a better devotee then lord takes away everything and um, accepts you as his own so at this moment of time you should give association to sub devotees be kind to them You know, show your love to them, and let them accept the mercy of the Lord as it is, and be grateful for that. You know, not just accept, but be grateful for whatever Lord does. Because whatever Lord does, either He steals everything away from you or He gives anything to you. Ultimately, it is for our good. It's the best tailor-made plan for each devotee. Mm-hmm. So, what we need is association in this crucial time. So, if you find such devotees, please give your association and inspire them. Okay, good. Thank you. Are Thank you, you so much. Hare so much. Krishna. So now I uh, Sukhakar Krishna Das Prabhu, I can request Sukhakar you please unmute and speak. Hare Krishna, um, Hare so Krishna. nice to meet you, Sir Prabhu. After so many years, Actually, I, I was in Mumbai with Krishna Prem Prabhu. So my father oh. left his body in uh, your uh, hospital, you know, oh. uh, Bhakti Vanda Hospital. So he was there for one week, and you took so much care that he left his body for Krishna because fourteen doctors chanted Prabhu. So yeah, wonderful! Yeah. That is yeah. like a Vaikunta. There is not a hospital. Yes, and it is all not a Vaikunta. And all fourteen days, Radha Gopal came and did katha in our house, and uh, Prashubhanu oh. Mataji was there, and they did, and all. Wow. There is a big uh, program going wonderful. on in Chembur nowadays. So really, wonderful. you you devotees from Radha Gopal Maharaj are really Vaikunta people. Prabhu. Definitely, that's all Vaikunta people. Any question you have, Prabhu? I got one question, Prabhu. 
now i went to srinangam last week i went to gopalapata goswami's uh, descendants i met two devotees who are the current generation but they said it's a sad story rajanath maharaj bet and that their sister or something sold that mahaprabhu where he stayed there and they oh. broke that and a building has been five story building but nobody is buying that so they were greedy to just make it a business though gopal kata goswami is uh, grandson wanted to not to sell and radhanath maharaj agreed to pay 7 crore and 10 crore also were ready to pay from his call but it went off from the hand and only jagannath and mahaprabhu all the thing they broken so i feel very sad that you were telling you know that mahaprabhu had stayed there for four months and we he had did told so him very things. clearly that in time you want to sell then we will be able to buy and maintain that thing. yeah but but, he, but that power of attorney was with that some lady one of the yeah, Mohan yeah. Patel very sincere, but uh, he was not alone. He had many Absolutely. people who were the stakeholders, so they were not as devoted as him. So he failed yeah. to manage the place. I no, really but, cried. Yeah. I really cried. Mahaprabhu's things went away. No, I felt really cried to him. So Galiuga, nice. this is Galiuga. Now I have to only remember my memories in the heart of my stay <laughs> in that. <laughs> no, that, that house is there. The like, Murali, but the Prabhu is there. He's still there. It's a disputed, Murali. disputed place. Ah, uh, disputed place. Yeah, <laughs> we can go offer our respects. You know? Yes. Yeah. Any other question? Maybe, maybe. Prabhu, uh, this, this uh, Lokna Swami, you didn't tell Prabhu. You don't know two Ma Ma Sanatan Goswami and three you went to tell no Prabhu. I told Gopal, all three. Okay, okay. I told all three. Okay, Anita Ramaiya Mata Ji, <coughs> can you put your video on and? Yeah, I will answer your question. Your video is on. Good. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhu Ji. Thank you so much, Prabhu Ji, for such a wonderful Very class. Uh, so yes. I just remembered uh, seeing your poster the last year's Radha Shami uh, class as uh, Raj Prabhu Ji told. I just remembered that class only. It's still there in mind. Uh, the way you took the class. It's really Very amazing hard. and today also it was very amazing i was uh, i was just taking notes and then in between i just stopped i was just only focusing on your katha so it was so wonderful uh, everything each and every katha which you told i can visualize also that's where uh, i right. got that uh, nectar right. it was very much nectar and uh, prabhu ji my question is like in uh, sanatan goswami past time uh, you, you told about the mother who was chastising madan gopal uh, Uh, Jay, so I just uh, missed the name which you told. Uh, can you repeat the name? Mataji's name is Chaudhary. Purushottam Chaudhary is the father's name. That Chaturvedi Brahman name was Purushottam Chaudhary, and Mataji's name I don't know. I never mentioned that name. Oh, okay. Okay, Prabhu Ji, that's what that's what my question is. Good. Keep coming Good. frequently, Prabhu Ji. We want your nectar in class Jai. every time. Very nice. Chai ho, chai ho. So, so if you are interested in calling me for others to me for on Zoom lecture, please do Harry it fast Bo. because <laughs> lot of uh, are there. I have a uh, duration everything. I'm going to Rathibu Pune Bo, for others to me. So you can <laughs> yes. arrange my lectures. Yeah. Yes, Shama Puri Mata Ji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very very wonderful class, Prabhu Ji. Thank you so much. We when we were in school, they used to say, "Thora Mahatme ho na gele charitra tanche pahadra apne tancha samanava ve haji sapde ho dekra." So we need your blessings, Prabhu Ji. Since you are from, you are so much connected to Vrindavan. We can see your tulsi mala. Such a big Tulsi. Uh, <laughs> you have blessings from uh, Mother Tulsi. So thank you so much, Prabhu Ji. How to uh, please tell us uh, means how to stay in the consciousness of all these Goswamis. They were always uh, conscious of means they are always Krishna conscious. And we uh, we yeah. like you know for the class is going on. We are in Krishna consciousness, but out of that. We are again go to material world. So, so the easiest way, uh, there are many ways. Uh, one of the ways is to listen to the charitra of these great souls. I could have attempted to squeeze in three charitras in one hour, but we have to keep on listening to the charitras regularly. I'll tell you what I do. Every day morning when I wake up, there's a speaker of Radhana Swami's lectures and Prabhupada's lectures called Prabhupada Vani. So that is next to my bed only. So first thing I wake up and I put on that. 
So that is the lectures of all Prabhupada and Radhana Swami. And now I'm listening to Chaitanya Charitamrita. Every day there is one one new person like Jagadananda Pandit or Shivananda Sen or Sanatan Goswami or uh, you know uh, so many you know, great souls are there and their leelas are being discussed. So you keep on hearing every day, number one. That will give you a daily inspiration of their charitra. And second is, each and every charitra when you listen, there are so many instructions which you learn, which you get, which you yield. And please follow them. It's not just hearing stories of Chana. Oh, wonderful story of Sanatan Goswami. No. Each and every story has got so many lessons to learn yeah. and to follow in life. And when you do that, then even off the lecture, even if you follow the instructions are given by the great soul, you will not be off the track. How to develop consistency from lecture to lecture is to follow the instructions given by the great souls, which are conveyed to us by our acharyas, explained to us, diluted and explained to us, made, made us to drink that elixir of instruction and follow the instruction. That's how you can constantly remain. And I'm requesting you, don't just listen to what I said, do it. Buy that box, keep it next to your pillow, and first thing in the morning, open your eyes and put that on. And then put your light on, then you go to your washroom, then you do your morning duties and keep listening to that. And you take something like 30 minutes, sometimes 45 minutes. You can hear jolly well one lecture or two lectures. If you are producing Prabhupada lectures, you can listen two lectures of Prabhupada because he speaks more than less than 20 minutes. And maybe Radhana Swami speaks more than one hour. So you can get two or one lecture, you can get nectar in the morning while you're doing nothing. You're just brushing or cleaning yourself. Immerse yourself. And that's yeah. how your day will be spiritualized. And you will be inspired right in the morning to chant your rounds nicely. Make your life Krishna conscious. Okay? Are you bold? Thank you so much. Gopinath, we can hear it in Radha Gopinath this morning. Every day we got lecture, no? Prabhuji, every day morning there is one ah, lecture. Bhagavatam classes are there every morning that you can listen. You can go to... What is the link, Radha Gopinath? What is the link, Prabhu? Radha Gopinath, uh, any, any particular... Uh, this one is there for uh, getting tuned? It's called Desire Tree. It's called Desire Tree. Maybe our Raj Das will let you know the link. It's okay. called Desire Tree. Yes. Dot net or RG Media and YouTube. There is ocean. What sixty thousand lectures are there in that website? On lifetime will not be enough to listen to those. And but every day morning, if I want to listen, Radha Gopinath lectures. It is coming up in, in the chat box. You please see there. Okay. Any and other question is that before we close? Another hand raised from Archana Mataji. Archana Mataji, please go ahead. No, it's, a, it's, a, it's raised from beginning. She has not erased the hand. It's a old, old indication. Okay. This Achana hand is not raised now. It's already answered. Anybody else has any questions? You can raise now. Okay. I, I don't see any more hand raised. Dear devotees, if anybody has any question regarding the class, regarding the Goswamis, or uh, any other question from Prabhuji regarding, please uh, go ahead. Right now is the chance, is the moment. Hari Bol. Hari Bol, Hari Bol. Thank you so much. You are in which time. place in America? Uh, Prabhuji, I'm in Canada. Canada, wow. Hare Krishna. Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Prabhu, thank you so much. And thank you so much, Prabhu, for uh, giving us that uh, injection, you know, of, uh, of <laughs> telling us to listen those lectures. No, Prabhu, it's so important. You know, coming from your mouth, we will certainly even uh, engage us like 15, 20 minutes in listening to Srila Prabhupada Vani and our life will be successful, Prabhu. That's all we need, Srila Prabhupada, in our life. This is a Nothing. small injection that I gave. There are many big injections I have got. <laughs> <laughs> we are also tiny doctor. devotees, Prabhu. Lowly devotees. We need small injections. <laughs> Raj Prabhu, may I say? Allow me that I give bigger injections also. <laughs> please, our, our uh, senior devotee, Prahlad Anand Prabhu, please go ahead, Prabhu. I'm just yeah. not asking any question. I'm just, uh, uh, you know, offering my obeisances to the Prabhuji that when he asked where, where you are in Canada, uh, I'm so thankful for bringing such a transcendental, uh, you know, sto um, uh, katha of all Goswamis in a very sinful place where I'm staying, which is known as in Las Canada? Vegas. Oh, <laughs> this is <laughs> oh, capital of capital. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter whether wherever you are, wherever you are uh, in, immersed in Krishna Katha, you are in Kono Prindavan. That's right. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> this place, this place is famous for Srila Prabhupada. Sriya Sunapana Yudhyatra Pap Chaturvida. 
So these are yeah. these are placed there, and in the very early morning, around 4:20 yeah. a.m., I'm getting such good katha from Vrindavan. Uh, wow, 4:20 a.m. in Las Vegas. Oh my That's God! Right. <laughs> Every day at 4:20. Yeah, we I get such a such thing, which I you know I'm so grateful to to Mataji who started this. You know, otherwise, <laughs> where do I get such such thing in the in Thank morning? You so such much. a thing. Thank you very much for all this. What we we are getting nectar from you, Prabhuji. Every Hari Bol. So shall we end here now? Yeah. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Also, I have permission. a YouTube channel which you can uh, log on or subscribe, and daily I give lectures, and it comes on my YouTube. You can also see that. Hari Bol, thank you so much, Prabhu. Thank you. What is the channel thank name, Prabhuji? Vivekananda Vishwarup Shambhag. I'll write down in chat. Please, Prabhu. Okay. Yes. I just write down. Huh? My my uh, kept name kept by father is Vivekananda, and my spiritual name is Vishwarup. So Vivekananda Vishwarup Das. My surname Shambhag. Uh, yeah, this is my this is my uh, YouTube. Title, I'm sending it to you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Prabhu. Maybe what I'll do is I'll send one of my uh, lectures to uh, Shama Gauri Devidasi, and that video lecture can be forwarded to all of you, and then you can subscribe. So it will be easy for you. Instead of searching, yeah, yeah. Indileka Mataji has posted, uh, Prabhu Ji. Indileka Mataji has uh, posted the YouTube link. Uh, uh, yours. So. Yeah. We can also so share it now. But can can you can and share it. Yeah. And I, I request uh, this lecture. Uh, please send me the YouTube link also. Yeah. Yes, Prabhu. Yes. Prabhu. I spoke now. You have recorded. I was going to record, but you already started recording. Yes, Prabhu. It's all recorded on YouTube right now. It's live on YouTube, Prabhu. Many people are right. watching. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Thank you so much. विश्वरूप प्रभु जी की राधना स्वामी महाराज की जय हो गौरंगा नित्यानंद